Hello, everybody. My name is Fez, and I'm one of the co-founders at Daily Delivery. Um, so I want to apologize beforehand for the substandard level of uh, the slide that you will be encountering. But um, truth of the matter is that I got a call last night around 9, 9.30 from a very good friend, Ashley, who works at Tech Toronto, um, asking whether I could, I could fill in a spot. Um, they had a free um, you know, slot. And so I'm like, yeah, I'm in. And um, I didn't have any slides. So I tried like, you know, grabbing a few pictures that put a personal story to uh, what I want to share. Typically, I would stand up here and go about like, you know, how successful we are, sugarcoat every failure that we had and make it like a success story. But truth of the matter is that most often there is no perfect time as you just heard from like, you know, our first um, story that um, there is no perfect plan, there is no perfect time. You just got to do it. And what I mean by that is that most often we fall into um, that trap that I'm not where I should be. Like, you know, I'm going to quit my work or I'm going to graduate from school and then I'm going to work on my next big idea. Year 2012, um, that will be my younger brother, Sal. He's the techie guy. I was uh, working at SFU and Cactus. So two jobs, both of them together. And um, we thought about coming up with a delivery system. Back in Iran, labor is abundant so that you know, everybody could afford having a driver. We moved, moved, when we moved here, um, there was a gap. So we're like talking about it with everyone. And one of the lessons that I learned was that share your idea. Don't worry about people stealing it. It's about the execution. It's not about the brilliant idea that you have that is going to make you millions. Um, so after that, we're like, okay, what do we want to do? We hired a development company. We uh, laid out the plan. Eight months later, nothing delivered. So we're like, okay, we're fucked. What should we do now? Let's put up a Facebook page. This is you taking control of your own plans rather than waiting for the perfect tech piece. Um, as uh, we just heard, like, you know, it's a delivery company, so there was nothing special about it. But instead of doing it like everybody else, going around and signing contracts, we started putting, like, you know, um, brands like Cactus Club, 7-Eleven, not knowing that there is going to be infringement of brands uh, involved. So as we did that, we started getting traction, but about two months in, we got like two or three different lawsuits from IGA, like, you know, Cactus, and like, I was having a heart attack. But as soon as we picked that up, a bigger company, what happened here? Oh, Keep going. all right. So um, this company called Just Eat, found us, uh, we had framed the company on Twitter as a sustainable urban distribution system. And we had no electric scooters, no nothing at the time. We got contacted by Just Eat. Um, we uh, kind of conned our way in. They came into my place. My friends were making calls to my uh, other phone and a friend was picking up. Hello, daily delivery, how may I help you? The guy's like, fuck, you guys are so busy. Like, how long have you been in business? And I'm like, about a year. We got like about 40 scooters on the road, all electric. We got that contract with that contract like you know I went to my grandpa and like you know uh, we got about 7,000 which we bought the scooters um, out of that we realized that it's not about the piece of technology that we have it's more about the service we're a service oriented company and the only way that we could wow our clients is by the class usually you would have someone with a baggy clothes coming in smelling like smokes asking for tips we didn't want that we wanted a totally different experience so we had our drivers put on a bow tie so that was our magic sauce and everybody loved it second we did that we got foodie yellow pages um, a bunch of other online ordering platforms and um, out of that business in vancouver picked up the tail did a tiny piece on that, we build up the momentum so we didn't spend a dime on marketing. And I'm sorry if I'm running through the you know, story, but honestly, this is just a blink of an eye when I look back. But when I go back, like we did deliveries on those two scooters for a year and a half. Not too many people know that. They think that, oh, these guys came up with like a crowdsourced delivery system idea and they made it overnight. Um, fast forward that we went to the dragons we slated it out um, the problem was that we were still not scalable and a false notion of having a bigger team caught up and we're like hundred thousand in raised money we're like we want a bigger team went out got a team of 25 only to realize a year and a half that our burn rate is not going to sustain us and take us to where we want to be so what we had to do was a very hurtful experience but we had to go the entire team and offshore the entire like development team call center you name it the dispatch now we have a team of 35 they're all offshore like four bucks an hour I'm not proud 
to say that, but it's the reality of like, you know, what we face. Sometimes you have to make sacrifices that are not comfortable, but you know, we had to make it. Um, fast forward that to again, like a year ago when we got Walmart out of that uh, Dragon's Den episode, we, did, we couldn't uh, secure funding. When I went to my previous investors and I'm like, hey, like, you know, we got Walmart and they're like, Walmart, nasty guy, stay out, like, don't, don't go even like, you know, fucking around with them, they're gonna kill you. I didn't listen, we went to Toronto, I um, you know, got a room, one bedroom off of Airbnb and that was my office for about three months. But no wonder we got to launch Toronto, that got us into London Drugs and a bunch of other clients. Now we're not doing daily delivery um, as a service provider, now we're doing software as a service because we realized if Walmart wanna go to a bunch of other cities, we have to go and recruit and drivers, delivery, eight bucks, per delivery, it's not really feasible, it's not really scalable. Um, so what we did was that we outsourced the software to the same companies wanting to either manage their own drivers or we sourced other delivery companies who were present in other cities, onboarded them onto the software and then had other um, businesses connected with them and charge a subscription rate as opposed to flat delivery rates. Um, and that's pretty much about it. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Any questions? Well, it's a quiet crowd, Fez. Yeah. Oh, we got one? Do you want to, do you want to, uh, I can, no, no. You really want me to, my knee, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, hey, great story. Um, you mentioned the dragons. Right. So is that a TV show? A uh, dragons then is a TV show, yeah. yeah you go can, pitch. Can you just... Uh, tell us how to go, any story about it. Um, absolutely. So this is us right after a brunch. We were super hungover. And again, like, I, I look back, everything that I've done in my life is last minute. And I think that, that kind of puts us where we are right now because we had a call um, from a friend who was pitching a similar delivery company idea, very similar. Um, and he's like, hey, like, you know, there's an audition going on, Vancouver Hotel, do you want to come by? I think they're doing an audition for the entire day. So we put on the bow ties and we go there unprepared. We didn't have anything prepared for the pitch. Um, but we went there with our story. We're like, hey, we're two rookies. Like, we don't know what we're doing, but this is business in Vancouver. They have us. I think we have a story to tell. And like, you know, we're immigrants. We knew what they like to hear. And uh, they're like, oh, immigrants, entrepreneurs, great. We're on board. And um, that's, that's how we actually got on the show. And uh, from there on, we just tried to, uh, you know, put the mustache to work and uh, work our charm to get the money. <laughs> You're really charming. Any other questions? Oh, he's, he's got a lot. Sorry? You were awarded the... Uh, we, yeah. Yeah, so with like, we got two of the uh, dragons uh, saying that they're in. Which ones? Uh, Joe and Michelle. So our, at the time, we had raised at two million, and uh, when we pitched, they slashed our valuation by one third. And they're gonna, uh, uh, they, they told me that we're gonna do it, but like, you know, at one third of what you're asking. Went to the back, and we're like, there's no fucking way that we're gonna do this. But we're gonna go out, shake hands, because we had talked to a bunch of other startups, and they're like, no matter what they tell you, you come out and it's gone. The only thing that you can do is to show some positive, like, you know, emotional bonding on the show. That's how you might end up, like, you know, airing. And so that's what we did. We came out, we shook hands, we came out, delayed um, the negotiations for about a couple of months, and then we told them uh, we have better investors uh, at the table, uh, so it's not really fair for them. Um, and then Michelle was like, well, I, I, I don't really care about the valuation. I, I like you, I like your brother, I like the team, I like where you're headed, uh, so I'm in. And Joe uh, dropped out as, like, you know, he had a handler uh, that did his work, so, yeah. <laughs> Fake All the dirty secrets. I love this, yeah. Faz. That's fantastic. Thank you.